So what's the best way to relic a pit guard? I'm not sure and I have theories but I'm gonna see, well I'm gonna go with my gut and see how it turns out. This is a Fender brand mint pit guard. It's a 62 so it's got the screw and an odd spot. So there's a couple of methods that I've heard of. One is using um, a vintage tint amber and spraying lightly, you know, around the edges. And then the other one is using the old Kiwi shoe polish method. This would, this one definitely would entail scratching up the pit guard with some sandpaper, taking the sheen off of it, and using very fine paper uh, is what I would do, so that you wouldn't have any big scratches. So uh, to me, so this is my opinion. I have this and it's probably three quarters full. So I like to use it. I paid for it. You know, it's not that cheap, but I don't really know if I feel comfortable getting like orange on the pit guard because this stuff is really orange. I mean, just look at it. And I did use it on the neck for this guitar. And if you go too much, I mean, if you go just a little too much, it gets very orange. So I don't know how I feel about that. I don't feel like you could have much control with spraying it. So if you missed it from far enough away, it's kind of hard. It's going to be hard to get it in the right spots in the right places. So what I think I'm gonna do is use the Kiwi shoe polish. This is brown because I think it'll look just more like dirt, you know, because dirt is brown. It's not orange. So my method here, what I'm gonna do is take the plastic off the pick guard because I haven't even done that yet. And these knobs aren't installed. They're just sitting up here. I haven't even screwed or made holes for the pick guard. What I'm going to do is sand it with some fine sandpaper, perhaps even wet sand it because I want it to be really fine and just take the sheen off and have a pretty smooth surface but sort of matte. Just something for the shoe polish to kind of dig into. And then I'm going to go around a lot. I think most relics don't have a lot of discoloration underneath the strings. And so I'm going to try to avoid that. Some I've seen have only discoloration under the strings which seems odd to me, but um, so I'm going to work kind of from the outside in and hopefully it kind of fades. I, I've seen some where I, it's just almost sort of an outline, not like a stark outline, but a lot of discoloration here and a lot of discoloration here. So that's going to be my tactic. Oh yeah, and then for the knobs, I think I'm just going to take some shoe polish and kind of work them into the grooves where your hands would turn those and get dirt inside the grooves, the, the knobs, and I'm going to try to do probably more on the volume because that would be used more and then maybe more or less on the tone knobs. And as far as the pickup covers, I may try to get like a brown, brownish dirt kind of around each of the holes where the poles would be, but that might be difficult to do, and I don't know. Uh, that those are going to be kind of tricky but i will try to document whatever i do and let you know i just took the plastic off of this pick guard and you can see how glass mirror finish shiny it is on the top there's another example another uh, lighting so i'm going to scuff that up and get the shoe polish to hopefully stick on there and hold so if you can't tell, this is the back of the pick guard. I'm gonna take some of this Kiwi shoe polish. I wet a t-shirt, because this is really dried out. I'm gonna take this and do, just test out the back of the pick guard and see how it works. Now I did not scuff this up like I will the front, but let me see if I can get a little bit better light. There you go. That shows it a lot better. Let me do this other side. Now this will probably come off if I wipe it well enough. But again, just testing it out, trying to get a feel for how it works and how it's gonna go on. So that's pretty much what I'm going for. Um, I think the, I'm, I'm planning on doing it again with a fine enough sandpaper that hopefully you won't see any kind of sort of marks on here. Yeah, so that's generally how I think I want it to turn out. 
So we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. So I was able to wipe most of this off with just so you can see here the wet rag that I used to put it on with, and then this is the dry. I just wiped that on the pick guard and most of it came off, but I'm hoping, assuming that on the other side with it kind of down into the crevices of the scratch marks that it won't come off as easily. And that's not to say that it's all coming off. I could possibly get it all off. Maybe, we'll see if I try hard enough. But like I said with the uh, headstock that I did, I used mineral spirits and the shoe polish came right off. So if I were to screw it up really bad, and yeah, it looks like most of it's coming off with just wiping it. But yeah, if I screw it really bad, I can use mineral spirits to wipe it off and start over again. So I'm just gonna wet sand the pick guard, the front of it, using my 3M rubber squeegee. And this is a thousand grit wet dry sandpaper. And I don't know exactly how it's gonna turn out, but I'm going to attempt it. All right, let's see what we got. Well, I found out that doing the wet sanding by hand works actually a lot better than the block. The block, because of the irregularities in the leveling, the block kind of misses spots and leaves valleys and things like that, and you get scratch marks where the corners of the block kind of lead and dig into the pick guard. So with the sand, uh, doing it with your hand, you can kind of get in and level out the, the valleys, if you will, and the exact level doesn't matter because you're not you know, polishing it off or anything like that. So that would be my tip, is just to do it by hand and skip the block. All right, so now I'm gonna take my shoe polish on the front and see how it goes. All right, this is pretty dark on here, so I'm going to Try to take some mineral spirits and see if I can take it off. All right, so the mineral spirits does take it off quite a bit, virtually removes it, lightens it up a lot. So that could be your savior if you're getting it too dark. All right, you can see how kind of horrible it looks like this, but Watch what happens when I take some mineral spirits to it. So you can still see it there, maybe, if I can get this light right, but it lightens it up a whole lot. So that's pretty cool. I just didn't really know it was gonna work out like that. All right, with regard to the knobs, I found that if I just kind of get a little bit of kiwi shoe polish on my finger. Make sure you get, don't, don't get any globs or like big chunks because they'll get embedded in there. But if you just kind of wipe around, um, you can get sort of a, either, you know, depending on how you want it, you can get kind of heavy on the dirt marks, so to speak, or you can just do it lightly. So, you know, however, however you want to do it, but I found that this works. I now haven't necessarily tried a method, you know, using a rag or something like that. I'm sure that would work fine as long as you get the hang of it. So I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, it just gives it a little bit of, you know, aged appearance. And, you know, like I said, you can go overboard with it if you want, depending on your level of relic. But to me, it just gives it sort of a, a darkening and yeah like a kind of a dirty look so that's what i've done with the knobs and again of course i'll show you the entire pit guard and knobs and everything once i get done with it okay here's the finished pit guard not that it's can't be changed either but it's uh i like the way it turned out it's subtle it's not too much but it's not too little either so you can see i've got some on this side and on this side primarily 
and it's not under the strings and it's not right here which I've seen a lot of relic pick cards that kind of miss in that spot I don't know maybe that's where your fingers would be maybe your you know your pinky if you're picking and stuff maybe we'll wipe off and keep clean that area but anyway regardless that's what it looks like and uh, you can kind of work with the the shoe polish and the, the mineral spirits if you get too much shoe polish like I said you can take some mineral spirits on a rag and just sort of wipe off and smear maybe the shoe polish and get rid of some of it so that's what I did I kind of went back and forth in areas you know I was like ah it doesn't have enough so I'd add some shoe polish and then I have too much so you know that's the good thing about this method is you can really tailor it to your liking if you were to do the vintage spray you know you could spray it on there but you pretty much I think have to scrape or sand it off and then you start getting you know you have to worry about scratches in the pick guard and how they look and things like that so I really like this method um, I don't really think it's gonna come off easily with wear and tear if it does by chance it's easy enough to add it back on but like I said or not like I said but my thinking is that regular dirt and wear would come off with something like mineral spirits you know it's just dirt and oil and stuff like that so if you had maybe naphtha or something like that you know you could probably clean up an old pick guard fairly well minus the scratches so this seems to me like sort of the same thing it's kind of oily and dirty and it's on there and I think it's gonna pretty much stay unless I wipe it off with something like a cleaner like that or a paint thinner so uh, well, let me show you the knobs real quick a little closer um, view in of the knobs so I kind of like the way those turned out too you know the, the shoe polish is like caked on there to the point where it looks like just black lines um, I, I like the way those turned out I didn't really want to put any on top I didn't want to get shoe polish down in the volume tone uh, words on the top I didn't want them to become black or really dark brown I wanted to keep that sort of gold foil look on there so those look fine to me and let me just show you the entire thing in a little bit different light there you go so again that's that's the pick art as it stands right now and with this method if I don't like it I can add some more or pretty much take it off if I want I don't know that I could take it all off but so I really like this method and these are the results Okay, I just thought I'd test out on this old pit guard that I have. Spraying the Stumac Vintage Amber on here. Just see what it look like. looks like. This is shiny, so it's not gonna stick, but I just thought I'd try it. Okay, I sprayed this scrap pit guard with the old Stuart McDonald vintage amber tint, and it's pretty yellow. I mean, there's the results. If I put that on the guitar, there's what it looks like. And it sort of looks too much like a bumblebee to me. Too much uh, yellow and black. So, but you know, it, it might be doable. But here's uh, the comparison with the pit guard that I did before and the um, mint green and the brown shoe polish so there's the two together now granted the one on the right is a white and so it may be a starker contrast between the yellowy stuff and the white versus what that might be on the mint and you know of course i don't have well i could sort of um, emulate what these will look like on there just kind of throw them on hey i got the volume now right right spot okay so that's that and i can't really put very easily the pickups in there but i can kind of give an idea of that uh, aged white color on there so i don't know i mean if i could possibly get the spray a little bit lighter or um, maybe less on the pickguard maybe just instead of coming in further towards the pickups just stop but you know this is an aerosol can it's not like a, a nice spray gun so if you had maybe some of that dye and you mix it up yourself and maybe you put a little bit more brown in it 
and you have a spray gun, then that might be feasible. But in the in the aerosol can, I don't know that it really works. This might look good maybe on like a Sonic Blue or maybe a ivory or white guitar, but I'm just not sure I like it on the black. So, you know, this is my scrap piece. It's nice to have it because I can kind of test stuff out on it. Um, I think I like this pretty well. The, the shoe polish, uh, it doesn't stand out too much, which I think I like. I mean, I, I kind of like it being subtle. It sometimes has like a pinkish hue to it, depending on the light. But I, I think I'm going to like what it looks like with that, just being kind of subtle and not too in your face. And then uh, real quick while I've got this here, this is the back cover plate, the spring cover plate. I'm not sure exactly what to call it. Call it what you will. It is mint. It's from Stuart McDonald. And it did not look like this when I got it. It was brand new. So some of the things I did, some of the things that worked really well is if you can see the edges, they're kind of chipped off. So what I did is I just took a really sharp, like, um, I guess like a hunting knife or pocket knife. And I just took it and like kind of dug in there a little bit. And then it just kind of chipped and popped a little bit as much as I could. And, uh, you know, obviously this is layered, right? So you've got the mint ply and then the black between it sandwiched and then another mint on the, on the back of that. And I saw, I'll try to put a picture up of the one I saw that was kind of my inspiration for this. But so I did that with the chips, just kind of random. I didn't make them all look, I try not to make them all look the same. So like I did one, you know, bigger one here and one bigger one there. And then down here I did like two smaller ones. And I did one here because, you know, sometimes these older plastic guards, they can split where the screw holes are. Um, so I did that. And then I took something sharp, maybe the knife or a screw or something, and I kind of dug in and made some scratches. And then what really makes those scratches show up is I took some shoe polish. This is kind of beginning well-known around the guitar world for uh, people who do this kind of stuff. Um, and then I also put some of that around the... Uh, other parts of the guard. Uh, but before all that, I, I wet sanded it with like 800 grit or something like that or a thousand and it just took the sheen off. So, well, this this part does not have the same sheen as the front did. So I really can't, you can't compare it that way. But this part was really shiny. Um, I can't remember if it had plastic on it. I think it did when it came, but I, anyway, I took that off and then I just kind of wet sanded it with some fine paper and it took the sheen off or the shine, made it more matte. So that was the first thing and then I did the chips and then I put some coloring on it. Now the the uh, shoe polish, you put on there initially and it's like, oh my god, what did I do? But if you really rub at it, it kind of like fades it and makes it more believable. But just be careful with that stuff because it could look really bad if you if you mess up. But I think you're pretty safe. Just go slow again and and take your time and, and less is more in, in a lot of ways with this stuff. Now the, uh, the trim arm plastic tip, it looks a lot brighter on camera right now than it does in person. But for comparison's sake, here you go. Let me see if I can make this light a little better. Okay, yeah, you can tell a little better here. So what I did with this is actually set it in coffee solution. I did scuff it up. I think I mentioned that, but uh, yeah, I put it in coffee solution for about two days and it turned out pretty well. And I was able to, it has some weird streaks in it that I was able to kind of buff out. And so, yeah, that came out pretty well. Uh, this one, if you can tell, I'll put them in order of their color. This one in the middle is, is between color. So this one's pretty white. This one's a little creamy and this one's pretty creamy, yellowy. Uh, this one actually came off uh, my one of my kids' Guitar Hero guitars, and um, it does not fit the same way inside, but it's the same shape, same size otherwise. And then this one actually came off this arm, which is, for some reason, I have a lefty trim arm. An interesting thing is this one actually has like a press fit, so it press fits under this little indention here, and so it will not fit onto this arm, and neither will this one. This one's just entirely too big. But just for comparison's sake, that's the way this guy turned out, and I'm pretty happy with it. All right, I think that's everything for the time being on this relicking. Okay, here's a little addendum to that last clip you just saw. I realized that I did not include this trim arm tip here. I don't know that I had it when I took that last video. 
But anyway, now that I have it, I wanted to include it. Now you can see this toy Guitar Hero guitar, and then this is the one from the Oddball left-handed trim arm that I have. And then this one that I have in my hand is actually the one that came with the aged white knobs and selector switch and the pickup covers that you can see there. So this is the same color as all of those. And had I had that at the time, I might not have aged this one necessarily. You can see they're pretty similar now. This one has some just kind of dirt on it that I'm not sure why. I can kind of scratch it off. I don't know that's, if that's actually from like my hand or something, dirt, but and so it doesn't matter to me because the guitar is supposed to look used in my case. So again, in order of color from whitest to most yellow, I guess you would say uh, that's the order I put them in. And just, just to give you an idea of how much these can vary, and it's just kind of getting nitpicky when you look at something like this, but I just want to give you an idea of all the colors that are out there. And I'm sure there's even more than this. Another thing I did just to add some relicking is I put some old tried and true Kiwi shoe polish on there. I essentially just, well, let me back up. I took the shine off of these. Uh, I did that by taking like 800 grit, some fine sandpaper, and just going over those pretty well. You know, you can tell when the shine comes off. And these parts down here are not gonna really show, so you don't really have to worry about those if you don't want to. But what I also did, uh, like I said earlier, I mentioned um, I took the Kiwi shoe polish, just took some of my fingers, and again, I don't, I've heard this is carcinogenic, so <laughs> uh, use caution, I guess. Wash your hands shortly thereafter if you do that, or maybe use a cotton swab or something. But I put it on my finger, and I just, obviously not with them installed on the pickup, but when they were like this, um, I just kind of went around the holes. I'll demonstrate with this one. Uh, just kind of went around the holes like this. And I got some sort of like on the edges, but I used paint thinner. This has been a lifesaver during this project for all kinds of so sorts of things. Um, it takes off adhesive, takes off just anything. It's great. So if I got any on the edges or if any straight, I would just put some on a rag and kind of get it off. And like I said, it takes it right off. So um, that's that. Dad, this is not walking.